Yes, we have her back. She is Dr. Chris Purnell. You've seen her on a whole range of broadcasts, including national broadcasts, in which she is one of the top public health experts in the nation. She is Dr. Chris Purnell, Chief Strategic and Integration Health Office, Equity Officer at University Hospital. Good to see you, Dr. Purnell. Good to be with you. You've been one of us many times throughout this pandemic. We're going into May 2022, be seen a little bit after. Most significant lesson for you, takeaway for you of these two plus years? Wow, Steve, there's so many lessons, but I think the first and foremost lesson is the fundamental understanding of the importance of health equity to all of our lives, to not only the lives of those who are in the black and brown community, but if we are to achieve the fullness of health and life outcomes, we need to center all strategies and all public health and preparedness strategies around health equity. Otherwise, when crises strike, they expose, they expose that unfortunately underbelly of disparities that cause disproportionate loss of life, disability, and morbid morbidity. Dr. Beyond all the clinical and medical issues associated with COVID, and we've, we've talked about this before, you've talked about in other broadcasts as well, the very personal and powerful connection for you and COVID, please. So, you know, um, it's been two years since I lost my dad. I lost my dad on April 13th, 2020. Um, and since losing my father, I've lost several of a resident, uh, relatives, I should say. My sister is a long COVID survivor. Um, I've enrolled in a COVID-19 vaccine trial. And basically, I'm saying all of that is that COVID has had both a personal and professional impact on me. And that's true for so many people. Uh, that is why there are lessons that we can't afford not to learn, because there are lives that have been lost. And our nation is still dealing with grief. I know my family, we still deal with grief. But collectively, we're nearing the 1 million mark. I think we've already passed it. But with our formal counting, we're ne nearing that 1 million mark of lives that have been lost across the United States. That is an immense impact. And so I will never forget um, my father, and I know others will never forget their loved ones, but I hope that collectively we don't forget their sacrifice. Unfortunately, that's what it felt like because in the beginning we knew so little um, and we weren't prepared like we should have been. And hopefully going forward, public health is going to have the right priority and help equity will have the right priority that it deserves in this country. Dr. Pinnell, what, what do you believe it actually means to, quote, be prepared for the next public health challenge, crisis, pandemic, whatever? What does it really mean? What do we have to do? Be specific, please. Definitely. Very good question. So first and foremost, we need to make sure that our local and state public health departments are adequately funded. They're funded to do proper public health surveillance, whether that is active or passive forms, meaning we can track infections, we can track cases, we know how to do contact tracing, contact tracing across multiple diverse and inclusive communities, meaning that we know what indicators and what metrics are most important. Are we watching wastewater surveillance? that we have access to uh, vaccines. Are we able to dispatch and distribute those vaccines deep into community, especially communities that are saddled with health inequities and are, are facing concentrated poverty? Do we have access to rapid testing? Not only rapid testing that people can have access to in their homes, but rapid testing at pharmacies, rapid testing at hospitals, rapid testing at federally qualified health centers. Uh, we need to have that full gamut, that full gamut of preparedness and that toolkit. And those are just some of those mitigation strategies. And I haven't even talked about access to masks. Like where are masks available? Can a person go get a free mask? Uh, well, what are filtration systems? That's what I'm talking about when I say preparedness. Well, well connect, water connect water filtration systems to COVID. Well, I'm when I refer to filtration, I'm talking about filtering air, right? So a oh, lot. So, no, not water, but air. Yes, filtration. air, air. We know that COVID is an airborne disease, and if you recall, at the beginning of the pandemic, there was this back and forth dispute about whether or not COVID was being uh, spread by airborne transmission. 
for by the standard respiratory droplet transmission, we took far too long to conclusively say that COVID is spread by airborne transmission, meaning that people are bringing, breathing in infected air. So we want to make sure that our schools, we want to make sure that our places of employment, that they have adequate filtration system, adequate ventilation so that people can be safe and protected. We're more likely to have that in a hospital, but we need to make sure that that is through all facets of life, especially in those communities where people were disproportionately impacted. So that's what I'm talking about with preparedness. Okay, so I'm gonna complicate this a little bit more for you, for all of us. But as you know, people have been coming to you for answers as if you have all the answers, as if, any, as if anyone has all the answers. First question, the quote, confusing and quote, messaging often from public health agencies on every level of government, including the CDC. A, to what extent has what, to what extent do confusing messages about what we should and shouldn't be doing, where we are, where we're not, what the rules are, what's flexible, what's up to you, is that just the nature of what happens when, quote, we really don't know? Well, look, we were living through a very unprecedented time at the very beginning of this crisis, and there was a lot that we did not know, right? So I want to separate that portion of time from where we are today and where we have been in recent history. What I can say, though, we unfortunately in public health, and we must dis display accountability, Steve, we unfortunately in public health have at times community communicated things with confidence that we did not yet know with confidence. And then we gave people um, very convoluted ways of understanding when to mask and when not to mask very convoluted uh, ways of understanding how long should you quarantine if you've been exposed or how long should you isolate if indeed you have tested positive. We need to do better with public health communication, especially around risk communication and around crisis communication. It is okay to say when you don't know something confidently. And how do that, to Chris. understand that? I'm sorry for interrupting. Dr. Chris, is it okay? And is it in fact appropriate and the right thing to do for certain government agencies in the area of health? to say at certain times, quote, we don't know. Yes. A and B was there tremendous pressure to act like we knew or they knew whomever, but didn't know because we want answers. But what happens if you don't know what the answer is, but then you act like you know and they, oh no, but never mind, never mind. That's changed. Of course it's changed. Tell yeah. us. Yeah, we have it's to, okay to say people, we don't know. Yes, we have to help people understand that in a crisis, things are moving so fast, right? We in healthcare and other industries have described it as a VUCA environment. It's volatile, it's uncertain, it's complex, it's ambiguous. We have to be upfront and level with the American public and say, look, this is what we do know, this is how we know what we know, and this is what is still unknown. But these are the metrics or the indicators that we are watching to help us inform our understanding. When we get more in the habit and the practice of explaining how we're able to arrive at solutions, how we're able to arrive at interventions, how we evaluate data, I think the public will be more willing to accept that there are certain things we will not know with certainty. And then we also, we circumvent or we preempt the possibility that misinformation and disinformation can be spread so readily. So yes, we, we have to do better at risk and in, in crisis communication in public health. That's the bottom line. Uh, Dr. Chris Purnell is also going to be joining us on a very uh, important panel discussion talking about the impact of COVID, particularly in urban communities. Dr. Chris Purnell, you can see, check out, uh, we put up uh, Dr. Uh, Purnell's information so people can find out about her on social media, but her appearances, not just on public broadcasting, but in other, on other venues have been, has been so important for two plus years. Dr. Chris Purnell is the Chief Strategic and Integration and and health equity officer at University Hospital, one of our healthcare underwriters. I wanna thank you so much, Dr. Chris, all the best. Always, thanks, Steve. You got it, I'm Steve Adubato. That's Dr. Chris Purnell, see you next time. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, MD Advantage Insurance Company. New Jersey Institute of Technology, the New Jersey Economic Development Authority, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, Veolia, 
Operating Engineers, Local 825, NJM Insurance Group, and by the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. Promotional support provided by New Jersey Globe and by Meadowlands Chamber. Most people don't think about where their water comes from, but we do. Veolia, more than water, resourcing the world.